People who killed someone, what happened? A guy attacked me at 3 a.m. while I was walking to work. Literally barreled out of the woods and tackled me onto concrete with his belt undone. He broke three of my ribs. I tried to choke him long enough to render him unconscious. And I did. He never woke up. It still bothers me. I was arrested and questioned in the hospital. Uncuffed the following morning after the police obtained security camera footage. I've been asked before how I managed to hold the choke long enough to kill him. I don't know. I may have crushed his windpipe. I have no concept of how long the choke, or even the whole situation, lasted. My husband and I only had one car at the time and I had to ride with him to work one morning around 4 a.m. so I could drive back home. It was raining and the road wasn't lit. We were just chatting with one another and I was reaching for the CD album for some tunes. I looked up for a moment and thought I saw what looked like a crumpled up blanket or trash bag or something in the road but I couldn't make it out at all. My husband was driving and couldn't see it at all. Neither of us got to see for sure what it was until the headlights got close enough and by then it was too late to react. It was a man, curled up in a ball in the middle of the road, dressed completely in black clothing. I remember crying out just a half second before we struck him and went over him. It hasn't even dawned on my husband what had just happened and I was screaming and crying in horror. My husband was also very distraught and was shaking. I told him he has to call 911 and get help so he did. He got out of the car and went over to check on the man and see if he was responsive at all. Nothing. The ambulance and cops came. They asked us a bunch of questions and the whole routine. The news crews came out to film everything. That man died on the way to the hospital. This haunted me for over a year after it happened. A month or so later we found out that the man had abandoned his truck at a nearby gas station and walked away. He wasn't from the area either. We learned that two of his friends came down here to talk to him and tried to get him to go back home with them and get back into rehab but he had refused and said he wasn't coming back. There was a lot of alcohol and meth in his system. I don't know what that does to a person when those things are mixed but somehow this guy found his way into the middle of a poorly lit city street and curled himself up. I'll never know why he was there. I'm still afraid of driving on rainy nights. I don't think I slept well at all for a while afterwards. I have to travel that same road to work and now I always think about it when I pass that spot on the road. I was working as a cleaner at an aged care, resident with severe dementia, was sleeping. I decided to mop the floor in her room while she was asleep. Resident woke up and decided to get out of bed without assistance, resident slipped on wet floor. Carers found her unconscious and called ambulance, resident died at the scene. Nothing came of it as resident had no living relatives. I got told it was the carer's fault for not keeping a close eye on resident, but I blame myself, I still think about this late at night. A childhood friend suffered liver failure, and was on a breathing machine. When she breathed her last, her father could not bring himself to turn of the breathing apparatus. So, I did. And then the men from the funeral home came, they were very polite, and we gave them all the info they needed for them to do their job. Her stepmother stayed at the house, while I took her dad out for ice cream, just to be away from the scene. It was a warm summer night, and we walked and talked and had ice cream at the local Sweet Frog. You may think that might not qualify, but there is a moment of finality when you switch off a friend's oxygen machine. About six months after, I was visiting a friend, recounting the story, and suddenly the dam burst and I cried for hours. Friend of mine was outside of a bar waiting for a ride home. It wasn't that late at night and he texted me. I drove about 10 minutes to go get him. When I arrived, there were three other guys surrounding him, obviously wanting trouble. I ran and tackled one of the guys to the floor. I was completely focused on this guy because he was literally face to face with my friend. We start hitting each other and a bystander helped with the other two men. I managed to stumble back on my feet and kick the guy in the face, he hit his head against the wall of the building and I knew it wasn't a good sound. With my adrenaline rushing, I looked over and the other two men were running away. I was the one to call the cops and report everything. I didn't kill someone but my aunt and her husband did. They were camping and asleep in their tent. In the middle of the night, some strange man slipped into the tent and got on top of her. She woke up and started screaming. So her husband grabbed his gun and shot the guy. They both immediately ran out and went to tell the man running the campground what had happened. By the time police got there and checked the tent he was dead. Apparently the guy they killed had been arrested, exactly a year prior, for breaking into a tent full of kids at some other campground.
I'll never forget that night. He broke into my house and killed my sister before I could find a gun and shoot him. He was sent to the hospital and tried for first-degree murder, later sentenced to life imprisonment. It's been five years, and even to this day, I still blame myself for being too slow. I've had to twice. I worked at a gas station convenience store that my family owned in a state with extremely relaxed gun laws, so I always carry a gun. Two separate times a man has tried to rob the store, once at knife point, dumb as hell, and once with a gun, and two times a man has entered the store alive and left dead. I think they assumed I'd just hand the money over since most convenience store employees don't get paid enough to care, but like I said it was the family business so I cared a lot. I knew we had cameras in the store, so it was an extremely easy decision, as the police had concrete evidence I was defending myself in the store so there was no risk of prison, which is the scariest part of self-defense emo. Haven't lost a second of sleep over the bastards, and would do it again in a heartbeat. I killed my sister's unborn baby. We were teenagers and playing softball, I didn't know she was pregnant, and I hit a line drive she pitched to me. It hit her right in the abdomen. Loading some beams on a trailer at work, the truck driver walked between the live load and the trailer, one of the beams slid off, crushing and killing him. I wasn't new to the job, neither was he. I couldn't stop the equipment in the split second before he walked between them. He knew better but chose not to wait the few more seconds for it to come down to the ground. I tried to get it off of him but it was more harm than hood from that angle. The hardest part of the situation is that it was determined an industrial accident so no charges or anything got filed but the family sued for the insurance payout. It was really hard to watch the video several times of the incident, even though I would never forget what happened anyways. I never felt like I did anything wrong, the video shows that as well. I don't blame them for suing for the insurance, I wish they would have actually shown up to the hearings instead of just their attorney. I would like to offer my condolences, if they would accept. 11 years ago, my best friend and I started using crack. The addiction hit us hard. For 10 months straight we were basically driving our families bankrupt with very hard and constant usage. One night, Mike was unable to sleep. He tells me he hadn't been able to sleep for a week at that point. I told him I'd cut him off for a few days, as I was the one still managing to find money to get any. But then the night before he died, I went back on my word and gave him some. He used very little, I used my stash and ran out. The next day I had to leave to pick up some furniture for my grandma. He said he was feeling sick so he stayed behind. On the way to where I needed to go, I stopped and got more crack. Picked up the furniture and went home. Whole trip took about 42 minutes. I was counting the time cause I had a short window to be out in the first place for reasons that are not important. I come home and call out to Mike. He didn't answer so I assumed he was upstairs, my room was on the first floor while the rest of the house was on the second, and so decided to drop off grandma's furniture before going back to my room. I enter my room and I don't see him immediately. Then I spot his legs sticking out behind the bed. He was out cold between the wall and bed, dying from an overdose. I pulled him out from there and then shouted at mother to call 911. Cops came first. Ambulance about 45 minutes later. They picked him up, loaded him into the ambulance and took him to the hospital. His mother came rushing to my house right before they took him. I got in my car and drove behind them. I told the doctors and everyone what was going on. Didn't care about my legal safety, just told him it's probably the crack. About an hour later I went home. Two hours later his mother calls me to tell me he had slipped straight into a coma. One hour later, she calls again to tell me he had died. I tried to kill myself that night by smoking everything I acquired while I was out, all in a single sitting. I, clearly, survived. I've been clean since. I miss him dearly and will never forgive myself for what happened.